Hello, welcome back to 1954 Milwaukee Brave Baseball. Uh, we are still at the Polo Grounds. We won yesterday's game, 18 to two, and today is the next game in the series. Just to get caught up, this replay I'm not doing as played. I put the traded players on the teams they played with the most and uh, letting the computer handle the other rosters, uh, the replay, PC replay baseball is doing a very good job of that so far. Uh, also, I'm using different game engines. Uh, I'm going back and forth be between replay PC, replay cards and dice, and uh, payoff pitch cards and dice. I uh, purchased the um, cards and dice payoff pitch even after I had the the uh, PDF version just because I really, really love their cards. So so today I'm going to be using the payoff pitch uh, cards. Just wanted an excuse to pull those out and play a game with those. The last game was with the replay cards and dice. So uh, kind of keeps it interesting and a little different. So uh, my Braves are 9-1 and one in their last 10. We've won our last two. So we are uh, playing very good baseball as of late. We're a half game behind the Chicago Cubs uh, in the National League. Uh, the New York Giants, who won the pennant this year, are 34 and 34, so they're underperforming. And today we have a great pitching matchup. We got Gene Conley, who is seven and three with a 2.76 ERA, going against Johnny Antonelli, who was with the Braves last year. He was part of that Bobby Thompson trade. In real life, he won 20 games. So far in the replay, he's just 7-10 and 10 with a 331 ERA. So I imagine that he will pull it together and have a, a better uh, second half of the season. Uh, this is game number 66. This is the uh, furthest uh, along I am in any of my replays. So I thought I would play a game of that today. So let's head to the stadium. So here we are, beautiful polo grounds, one of my favorite old-time ballparks. Actually, I kind of like all the old-time ballparks. Uh, I enjoy the graphics of replay. They kind of put you in the mood, <laughs> which is something we talked about a, a little earlier. So let's head to the desktop, and we'll get this game started. All right, leading off for Milwaukee will be Bill Bruton. He's having a, an excellent year. He's hitting 325 with a uh, three home runs, 28 RBIs. He's <clears throat> leading the league with 21 stolen bases. So it's the lefty Antonelli versus lefty Bill Bruton. And we get a patient 48 and versus a lefty. That's going to be a hit by pitch. So Bruton gets on base. To lead off the game. Let's see. He needs a uh, five to get a lead, and he has one. Uh, West Western is a is a good arm, so that might prove difficult for for him. Let's see. That would be a a C two, and I think that's just a normal. Actually, it's just a fair. So. So we'll see what he got. Uh, Fair is out. So he is gunned down by West Westrom. That will be a caught stealing two to four. So that will be the first out here in the first. Obviously the Giants are looking for better results than they had yesterday in that, in that butt whooping. So Johnny Logan... Milwaukee shortstops hitting 297 with 35 RBI, six home runs. And here is the pitch from the left handed Johnny Antonelli. And that would be an, a tough 05, and he's going to go down swinging. So, first strike out of the day for Johnny Antonelli. And quickly two away for the Braves. 
Eddie Matthews, he's hitting 251, 22 home runs, 55 RBIs. He's coming out of his season or a month and a half slump. So lefty versus lefty. Matthews is uh, pretty good versus both, a little better versus righties. That's a patient 83, and he's going to be hit by a pitch. So how about that? So the former Brave is not showing much love to his former teammates as he has plunked two of the first three batters he has faced. Matthews is a 4B, got a 6, so he's not able to get a lead. That will bring up Joe Adcock. He's hitting 329, 12 home runs. He's leading the club with 57 RBI, so he's having an excellent year. And he gets a patient 03, and that's going to be a walk. So Johnny Antonelli a bit wild here to start off the game. If it wasn't for Bruton getting thrown out trying to steal, they would have the bases loaded, but that'll bring up former Dodger and Chicago Cub Andy Pafko. He's hitting 230. He has three home runs, 27 RBIs. In real life, he was pretty equal between lefties and righties. So here's the pitch from Antonelli. And that's a 7, that's an in-play 50. And he's going to hit a ground ball to Hank Thompson at third, and he'll go to second with it to retire the side. No, even though Antonelli was wild, he got by without any runs. There were no hits, no errors, but two left on. So we go to the bottom of the first, no score. Gene Conley, who doubles as a NBA basketball player, is pitching today. He's having a very good season. He's uh, seven and three with a 276 ERA. He'll lead things off here with Whitey Lockman, the left-handed hitting first baseman for New York. He's hitting 238, six homers, and 27 RBIs. And he gets an in play 34 versus the right handed Gene Conley. And that's going to be a pop out to third. And it's going to drift into foul territory. And Eddie Matthews will get to it and put it away for out number one. Al Dark, former. Brave when they were in Boston. We'll step to the plate. He's hitting 284, 12 home runs, 31 RBIs. One of the better hitting shortstops in the league. Uh, he gets a six, which is a patient 86. So that's going to be a ground ball to Logan at short. And he makes a clean play and throws him out for two way. Hank Thompson. Third base slugger for the Giants. He is underperforming a bit. He's hitting 224, six homers, 25 RBIs. He had 26 homers and 263 in real life. So here he is with nobody on and two away. And that's a five. That'd be an in play 43. And he's going to hit a ground ball to third. And the new rule uh, is if uh, it's hit to third and you get a zero, one, or two on the single digit 10, uh, it's a three to one if anything else is uh, unassisted. So that will be a three unassisted. Again, that's not important for anything if you don't want that much detail, but I tend to. So, so the Giants go down in order. And after one complete, no score. Love these cards. They just <laughs> they're so much fun to play with. All right, Johnny Antonelli will face Hank Aaron, rookie prospect for the Milwaukee Braves. He is hitting two sixty eight with seven home runs so far this season. That's an in play twenty eight, and that'll be a single against a left handed pitcher. That's a soft blooper into short left field. So just over the head of Dark and in front of Monty Irvin. And 
think Aaron leads off the second with a base hit. He is a 3D, got a 7, so he will not be attempting. Del Crandall, 224, 13 home runs, 33 RBIs. He is a 6 double play rating, so um, they're going to... He's an A bunner, so they're going to have Lockman in at first, just in case. So that's a tough 34, and that's going to be a strikeout swinging. So Antonelli will pick up his second strikeout of the game. And that'll be one away for Danny O'Connell. Having a pretty good year, 319. No homers, 22 RBIs. He only had two home runs in the real life season. The Giants are looking for the double play. The left-hander Antonelli looks for the sign from Westrom. Here's the pitch. We get a tough 67. And that's going to be a fly ball out to right field. And Mueller will put that away easily for out number two. One good thing about this 54 set from payoff pitch where there's one good and one bad. The bad thing is is that every other season he has every player that played or pitched at all. In this one, he didn't do that. There's some of the really uh, unused players didn't get cards, but he did card the pitchers. So kind of a give or take there. So, so far it hasn't been too much of an issue for me. So but just be aware if you get the 54 season uh, that this one's going to be a little different than the other one. So... So Gene Conley has his own card, so he will hit with nobody or two out, one on, and that'll be a seven, which is an in play 88, and that's going to be a ground ball to shortstop, and Alvin Dark will throw him out at first, and that will retire the side. So no runs, their first base hit of the day. They leave yet another runner on. They left three on so far. Go to the bottom of the second, still the zero zero. Say hey kid, do up next. Gene Conley. Uh Willie's having a great year, even though his team's not. He's hitting 336, 16 home runs, 61 RBIs. So he will be facing the right-handed Conley with to lead off the inning. And that's an in play 74. And that's going to be a fly ball out to Bruton. Takes a few steps to his right and puts it away. One out. Monty Irvin spent spent some quality years in the Negro Leagues. Fine player. He will be up with nobody on and one out. That's a tough 52. And that will be a ground ball to third. And Eddie Matthews will field it easily. Throw him out for two away. Davey Williams, second baseman for the for the uh, Giants. He's uh, hitting 227, four home runs, 16 RBIs. That's a tough 45, and that's going to be a ground ball to third. We got a five on the single digit, so that will be unassisted. Adcock will take it to. The bag himself, and for the second inning in a row, the Giants go down in order. So we go to the top of the third, still knotted at zero. So Johnny Antonelli, 24-year-old, will face the top of the Milwaukee lineup here. Uh, Bill Bruton was hit by a pitch, and was gunned down by West Westrom trying to steal second base. That's the fifth time he's been caught, and he's been successful 21 times. That's a tough 91, and that's going to be a ground ball hit to Davey Williams. Easy two bouncer, and he'll throw him out. One away. Johnny Logan struck out swinging in his first effort of the game. Here's the pitch from Antonelli, and I missed the tower, which I tend to do quite often. That's a in play 83, and that's going to be a ground ball to shortstop. 
Easy chance for Alvin Dark. And there are quickly two outs on two ground balls. Eddie Matthews, 23-year-old. It's hard to believe he's this young. He broke in in 52. Matter of fact, he was the only uh, brave to play in all three towns. He played in Boston, he played in Milwaukee, and he played in Atlanta, which is kind of cool trivia. The only one to have done that. So this is his uh, third year. He played 52, 53, and then this would be his third year. So here he is with nobody on and two out. That's going to be a defensive check, our first one of those today. We're going to check the error rating of Dark at short. He's a 3, and here at the Polo Grounds, that'll be a 1 to 52. It's going to be an error. And he gets a 25, so that is indeed an error to the infield, and that's a 1 base. So Al Dark not able to field that one. That will be an E6. Eddie Matthews on with two out, and he's a 4B, and we got a 4, so that's a B2. So it'd probably be a good idea to try to steal here with two outs. A B2 is a normal, so again, Westrom's got a pretty good arm. So we got a normal, and he's out. So how about that? Wes Westrom gunning them down. So he's out 2-4, to four, and that will do it for the Braves here in the third Second runner thrown out by Western. So no runs, no hits, one error, nobody left on that inning. So we go to the bottom of the third, still no score. So Don Mueller will lead things off. He hit 342 in the real life campaign. He's hitting 331 in the replay, so doing about what's expected of him. He is a left-handed hitter versus the right-handed Conley. And that would be a tough 14 versus the righty. And, uh, boy, he don't strike out much. <laughs> That's going to be a double. That's a, uh, an opposite field shot. So he hits it to left field, and it rolls around that concave left field wall. Aaron runs it down, but not before Mueller is on base with the first hit of, for the Giants today. So he leads off with a double. He's a 3F, so he's not going to third. That'll bring up Wes Westrom. We'll keep the infield back because I don't think they're going to butt for the pitcher. Wes Westrom's hitting 208, five home runs, 13 RBIs. And that will be a tough 01, and he is going to go down swinging. So good time to pick up a strike out there, the first one of the game for Conley. And that will... Bring the pitcher to the plate. Antonelli hit 163. He had two home runs in the real campaign. So uh, we'll have uh, Matthews in at third. But uh, we're not going to have them butt. So we're going to let Antonelli hit away. There's not much purpose in having Mueller over at third with two out. Nine is a tough 18. And he's going to go down swinging. So... Gene Conley rearing back and throwing some smoke. Strikes out two in a row after the leadoff double. So it's up to Whitey Lockman to see if he can get Mueller in. He fouled out to Matthews to lead off the giant offense today. This is a day game, by the way, so beautiful June day here in New York. And that's a tough 75. And so he's going to be a easy fly ball out to Bruton. He takes a couple steps in, and he will squeeze it for out number three. So some fine pitching by Gene Conley after giving up the leadoff double. He proceeds to leave him stranded there. So after three complete, it is still nothing, nothing. The Braves will lead off with Joe Adcock this inning. We got four, five, and six coming up to face Johnny Antonelli. Uh, Adcock walked his first at bat. He has a 405 on base percentage this season. So again, he's just playing well at all kinds of reasons. That's a defensive check. We will be checking the error rating of the pitcher. Antonelli is a four. So one to 41 will be an error. 
and that's a 77, so that's going to be an out to the pitcher, and that's a ground ball, so just bouncer back to the box, and Antonelli will jog over to first and hand it over to Lockman for out number one. Good defense by Antonelli there. Andy Pafko, he ended the first on a fielder's choice. He will be up with nobody on and one away. That's a tough 61. So that's going to be hit out to Mueller. Easy play for him. And he will catch it for the second out. Two away. Hank Aaron has the only base hit for the Braves. A single to lead off the second. So see if he can do that again. That's a tough 38 versus a lefty, and that's going to be a single. So not their base hit. Uh, blooped out in the right field, so Aaron goes the other way. Didn't hit it terribly hard, but he found a hole. And so he's on with the second base hit for Milwaukee to, this afternoon. So Dale Crandall will take a crack at Antonelli with two out and Hank Aaron on first. He is a 3-D. We got a four, so probably not going to try to steal too much on Westrom again unless we get a very good opportunity because he is mowing us down. That's a tough 74, and that will be an easy fly ball out to Willie Mays. And he will call for it and put it away to end the inning. So got a pitcher's duel going today. Braves have left four runners on so far in four innings. So we got two, three, and four coming up for New York here in their half of the fourth inning. Gene Conling, I believe he is 6'10", so he probably was a little imposing on the mound. He probably could stride halfway to the plate being that tall. So Alvin Dark, uh, he grounded out to his opposite number in his first effort of the day. He gets a patient 79. And that'll be hit out to Bruton. Hit pretty hard, but Bruton will race over to the left center field hole and squeeze it. So nice play by Bruton. One away. Hank Thompson, he hit a grounder to Adcock in his first at bat. 28-year-old third baseman. He gets a patient 39. And that's going to be a walk. So he does walk a lot. So that's the first walk issued by Conley this afternoon. He is a 3B, Thompson is, but he didn't get the roll that he needs. So he will hold out at first. The Braves are looking for a double play here. Willie Mays flew out to Bruton in his first at bat. So Conley trying to bear down to not get hurt by Mays here. That's a patient 47, and that is going to be a base hit. So that's a line drive into center field. Everybody's just able to advance one, so that's the second hit today for the Giants, and they will get two on with one away for Monty Irvin. He grounded out in his first at bat. He hit 262 in real life with 19 home runs, 363 on base percentage, so He's doing pretty close to that. So the Braves looking for a double play. Uh, Monty Irvin is a six. Double play rating. And that's a patient 74 versus a right-hander. So that will be uh, another fly ball hit out to Bruton. And it's hit pretty hard, but right at him. And he will put it away for the second out. So Two away, two on for Davey Williams, who also bounced out to Adcock to end the second inning. So the right-handed Williams versus the right-handed Conley. That's a tough 48, and that's going to be an easy bouncer to Eddie Matthews, and he will go to first with it, and that's it for the if I can find the 5-3 to three here, there it is. And that'll do it for the Giants. So they threaten, but leave two on. Another good job by Gene Conley. 
So no runs on a hit, and there were no errors. Two left. And we go to the top of the fifth, still zero to zero. I love me a good pitcher's duel. Especially at Polo Grounds, New York Giants, Milwaukee Braves. Sunny June afternoon. Doesn't get better than that. So Danny O'Connell, number eight hitter, will start off the fifth for the Braves. That will be a tough 95, and that'll be a fly ball out to Monty Irvin. Can of corn out number one. Gene Conley. He must have had a big strike zone at 610. So here is the pitch from Antonelli. That would be an in play 52. And so that's a fly ball. Out to Mueller in right field. He takes a few steps toward the foul line. And he gets it for out number two. So quickly two away on two fly balls. Bill Bruton. We'll see if he can salvage the inning. He's been hit by a pitch. Caught stealing and grounded out to Davey Williams at second. That's a tough 39. And versus a lefty. Uh, Bruton is going to go down swinging. So strikeout number three for Antonelli. He retires the Braves in order here in the fifth. And we will head to the bottom half of the fifth, still knotted at zero. So the Braves not having as easy a go of it as they did in last night's affair. All right, bottom of the lineup due up for the Giants, Don Mueller who's probably the best seven hitter in the league <laughs> at a 3.33 average. He doubled in his first at bat, and we got a leaner there. So that's a seven, which is a tough 98. So that will be an easy fly ball out to right field. Andy Papko has no trouble with that one, and one out. Wes Westrom, who is struck out swinging, but he has aided the cause with two caught stealings. So there's ways to help the team other than hitting. So he will step in with one out and nobody on. We get a ballpark check. Uh, oddly enough, Polo Grounds isn't that big of a hitter's park, so that will be an in play for Westrom. So that's a 1-19 to for him. And he gets a 66, so he is going to hit a... Easy ground ball to O'Connell, and that will put two outs in the book. Johnny Antonelli, he struck out swinging in his first at bat. Here's the pitch, and that's a tough night or a tough sixteen rather, and he will strike out looking this time. So fooled by Antonelli. Or by uh, Conley, I mean. So, the Giants go down in order, and we go to the top of the sixth. Everybody stuck at zero. So we got two, three, and four coming up for the for the Braves here in the sixth, the heart of their lineup. Johnny Logan is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And I missed the tower again, which happens all the time. That's a in play 06, and that's going to be trouble. That is a deep drive off the left field wall. So that's he hits a line drive over Irvin's head. And with the goofy configuration here, he's going to go for a second. And here's the throw, and he makes it. Obviously, we've got very shallow left field lines and right field lines. So, but he gets into second with, with a double. That's going to be his 13th double of the year. He only had 17 in real life, so he is a bit ahead of the pace there. So Eddie Matthew, so Johnny Antonelli starts off the sixth here in trouble. He's got to face Eddie Matthews and Joe Adcock. So they're going to pitch to Matthews, lefty versus lefty. And that's going to be an in play 0-2. And that's going to be a, a triple. 
So that's a, a grounder down the line. So it takes a bad hop uh, on Mueller, and Logan will score easily, and Eddie Matthews will chug around second and slide into third with a run-scoring triple. So how about that? Lockman couldn't get to that one. It was hit really hard right by him, and when it gets to that concave wall in right field, it, it scooted away from Mueller. You think being the home team, he would have been able to judge that better, but as it is, Eddie Matthews is on third base with an RBI. That's his second triple of the year, 56th RBI, and the Braves are on the board. So that'll bring up Joe Adcock. The Giants are going to bring the infield in. So here is the pitch to Adcock. He has walked and grounded back to the pitcher. That's a patient 30. Uh, we don't have any wild pitch. Uh, and against the lefty, he's going to walk. So that's the second time he's been walked today. And that is all the walks that Antonelli has allowed. So that'll put runners on the corner, still with nobody out. For Andy Pafko, so the Giants are going to they're going to bring in the corners, so they will take their chances up the middle. They'll change the outs for the run. So here is Pafko. He is 0 for 2 today. He gets a tough 47 versus a lefty, and that's going to be a ground ball to third or to first, rather, and so he is in, so we have to check our infield in chart. If I can find it. There we go. So we have to re-roll our 2D6s. We get an 8, so the runner on third is out at home. Other runners advance one base. So Matthew tries to score, and Lockman guns him down, so... And the corners in paid off that time. So that's going to be a fielder's choice. First baseman to catcher. And he is out, and everybody else advances a base. So big, big out there for the Giants. So three to two. He is out for out number one. Adcock will go to second, and Paf go on with the fielder's choice. So still just one away for Hank Aaron, who is two for two today. New York obviously in double play depth. Aaron is a eight double play candidate, so he he's hitting some double plays. He gets a patient 0-3, and he's going to walk. So third walk of the game for Antonelli. So he's walked the bases loaded. That'll bring up Dell Crandall, who has some pop in his bat. So they're going to be at double play depth all the way around this time. So here's Crandall, big at bat for the game. He is uh, struck out and hit a fly ball out to Mays. So here we go. That will be a tough 13, and he strikes out swinging. So Antonelli comes up big time there. Dale Crandall goes back to the dugout dejected. So two out, bases loaded for Danny O'Connell. It's up to him to see if he can add further damage here. We have just one run so far. O'Connell has hit two fly balls. That's an in play 11. Oh, that's going to be bad news. That's uh, that's a, a uh, liner into left center field. Uh, everybody's going to advance two bases. Aaron is a... Seven, so he's going to be able to score with two outs. So that's a bases clearing double for Danny O'Connell. How about that? Big three run double. So that quiets the New York crowd. So bases clearing double for Danny O'Connell. Leo DeRocher not happy with that one. So Dan, or, uh, Johnny Antonelli has struggled this year. His uh, whip is 129 to 117. Um, but uh, again, in real life, he was had a 230 ERA, 21 and 7. He's already lost 10 on his way to losing number 11 here. 
So uh, that gives Danny O'Connell 25 RBIs for the year. So they'll leave Antonelli to see if he can get um, get Conley out. So two out. Danny O'Connell on second. That's an in play 28. And that's going to be popped out or a pop up over by the uh, first baseman. And he will drift a little bit in foul territory and squeeze it to end the inning. But not before the Braves can plate four big runs. So they get four runs on one, two, three base hits. There were no errors. Those two walks ended up being costly. Both of them ended up scoring. They left one runner on, so we go to the bottom of the sixth. The Braves have jumped out four to zero. So Gene Conley with the lead now, seeing if he can hang on to it. Top of the order for the Giants. Whitey Lockman, who is 0 for 2, will lead off. That's a tough 56. And uh, that'll be an easy fly ball out to Hank Aaron in left field. One out. Al Dark, he's 0 for 2 today as well. The Giants have only been able to muster two hits. Willie Mays has a single and Don Mueller has a double. But that's been, been it. So that will be a ballpark 29. So that's going to be a wheelhouse for Al Dark, who has some power. And that's a 72. So he gets his pitch to hit, but all he can do is hit a hard grounder right at O'Connell. And O'Connell fields it cleanly and throws him out. So Al Dark would like to have that pitch back. That's the uh, first uh, wheelhouse today that... Uh, Conley has given up, and they weren't able to capitalize on it. So there's two away and nobody on for Hank Thompson, who has received the only walk today that Conley has given up. That's a tough 86, and that will be an easy grounder to O'Connell this time. Not hit nearly as hard as the last one, but the same result. And that will do it. So Conley retires them in order here. We go to the top of the seventh, still four to nothing Braves. So they'll leave O'Con or leave uh, Antonelli in. His fatigue is in the eighth. So after next inning, he'll be fatigued because he's given up the four runs. But they'll see what he can do here. At least he's got uh, the first two, two of the first three hitters are left handed. So we'll see what he can do. La Rocha. Leo DeRocher will keep an eye on him, of course. So here's Bill Bruton. He's 0 for 3 to, or 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch today, rather. That's a tough 54. And that will be an easy grounder to third. So the, Bruton hits an outside curveball over to Thompson. And he will throw on to Lockman for the first out of the seventh. Johnny Logan. He started off the big inning last inning with a double and ended up scoring. So he will face Antonelli here, one for three on the day. And that's a nine. That's an in play 76. So there will be a fly ball hit out to Willie Mays. He will move over toward Mueller a few steps, call him off, and take it for out number two. Eddie Matthews, he had that big, he drew first, first blood with that triple down the first base line. So he will face Antonelli with two out, nobody on this time. And that's a tough 47. And uh, Antonelli is going to get the better of him this time. He strikes him out swinging. So that's a good curveball, lefty versus lefty. So Antonelli... Redeems himself a little there by retiring the Braves in order in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here in New York. Four to nothing. Milwaukee. Four, five, and six due up for the Giants here in the eighth. They haven't been able to figure out Conley so far. Willie Mays is one for two with a single. So he will start off the eighth here to see if he can get something going. That's a ballpark 53. That will be an in play. It's uh, up to 41 for a wheelhouse 
both lefties and righties here at the Polo Grounds. And that's a 99, so that's going to be a fly ball out to Aaron. Can of corn, out number one. So Conley disposes of Willie Mays to begin off to begin the seventh, and he will focus his attention on Monty Irving, who is 0 for 2. Again, just two hits today for New York so far. And that's a ballpark 05, so that's going to be a wheelhouse for Monty Irvin. So he's got a good chance of good things. And he hits it. Uh, that's a line drive into left center field. And that one will get out of here in a hurry. So home run number nine for Monty Irving. He will put the Giants on the board. So that gave him a meatball there, and Monty Irvin didn't waste it. So that's RBI number 29 for Mr. Irvin. So Davey Williams will step in. So 4-1 to one, Milwaukee. Williams is 0 for 2. That's a tough 25, and that's going to be a single. So a good pitch by Conley, uh, but uh, Williams golfs it into center field. So second second hit of the inning, fourth of the game. He's a 3-D, so we got a 7, so he's not going to try anything. Don Mueller, who has doubled and hit a fly ball out to Pafco, will step in. The Braves at double play depth. And that's a in play 64. And that'll be a fly ball out to left field. So he goes the opposite way with it. But Aaron's able to track it down for the second out of the inning. So two out. Davey Williams on first base for Wes Westrom, who has struck out and grounded out. So Connie looking to get out without any more damage here if he can. He gets a patient 45, and that's going to be a walk. So that's the second walk today. So obviously the uh, Giants are going to go to the bullpen, or to the bench, I mean, here. And I say Dusty Rhodes is going to be their choice. If I had to guess. And that is indeed. So Dusty Rhodes, pinch hitter extraordinaire this year. Dangerous hitter. He hit 341 with 15 home runs and just 164 at bat. So dangerous, dangerous. He's the tying run. So this is an important bat here for Conley. So lefty Rhodes. He is hitting 292 with a home run and three RBIs already this year. So here we go. Want to stay off of the ballpark and the wheelhouse here with this guy. Uh, and that's going to be a tough leaner. 25, and he strikes him out looking. So O'Con or uh, Conley paints the outside corner, and Dusty Rhodes argues, but won't do him any good. So big, big pitch there for Conley. Big pitch. Nice job by Gene Conley. So one run on two base hits, no errors. They left two on. We go to the top of the eighth, four to one. Milwaukee Braves. So the Leo DeRocher is going to have to find him a new pitcher as they pinch hit for Antonelli. Let's see what they got. We've got mostly, well, we got all righties coming up. So it looks like uh, it'll be Marv Grissom will come in for the Giants. We will find his lovely card. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I love these cards. There's Mark Grissom. So, so far he is 3-2 and two with one save, a 195 ERA and 27 innings. So he's pitched pretty well for the Giants. He'll start off with Joe Adcock, who has walked twice and scored in three plate appearances. So the Braves looking maybe to get that run back if they can. That will be an in play 61. So that will be a fly ball out to right field. One out. Andy Pafko is 0 for 3. He did score one on a fielder's. Um, he reached on a fielder's choice. 
So the righty Grissom versus the right-handed Andy Pafko. That will be a patient. Oh, that's a rare play. Uh, the rare, the new rare plays are really cool on payoff pitch. So, so we got a patient. So we need to re-roll here because uh, which rare play you use depends on what you get on the pitcher's card, which is new and a lot more variety than they had before. So here we go. So that's a sixty-eight. Uh, batter hit by pitch and charges mound. Both teams spill on the field with a lot of pushing and shoving. The next hit batter this game ignites a brawl with the batter and pitcher being ejected and suspended five games each. So, and I'm doing, because I'm not doing as played lineups, that one would count. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's probably retaliation for, or actually, that's actually the third time they've been hit. The Braves are getting all the hit hit batters this game. Uh, Antonelli hit Matthews and Bruton in the first inning. So uh, I guess Pafco had had all he could take. So he'll be on first base. And so the next hit batter, there's going to be trouble. You know, Joe did a great job on these. I, I Some of the games offline have come up with some really cool cool. Um, rare plays, and it's not just rare plays. It's a little bit like history maker baseball, to where it actually affects things. Like I had one where a pitcher uh, got a bad call, and so the rest of the inning, because he was upset, every patient was a walk automatically. So I mean, that was really cool. I mean, it's like history, like a history maker baseball's rare plays. So good job, Joe. All right, so Pafco gets hit. Giants will be at double play depth with one out, and Hank Aaron will step to the plate. He's two for two with a walk and a run scored. So that will be a tough 0-1. So Marv Grissom rears back, and Hank Aaron is not able to catch up with it. He goes down swinging. So that's two away. Dale Crandall is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. He struck out swinging twice, so he's not having the best day ever at the plate. That would be an in play 14, and that's going to be a hit. Pafco is a 7, so he will automatically make it to third. That's a grounder up the middle. So Pafco scoots around second and into third easily. So the Braves have runner on the corners for Danny O'Connell. He gets a rousing boo from the crowd as he had that three-run double back in the sixth. So, Chris, I'm seeing if he can have better luck with O'Connell this time. Runners on the corner, two out. Important at bat here for the Giants. And that's a patient 58. Ooh, just out of the reach there. So that's a ground ball to Thompson, and he'll go the easy way at, to second. Davey Williams receives it, and that'll do it for the Braves here in the eighth. So that's out number three, fielder's choice. They got no runs, one hit, uh, two runners left. We go to the bottom of the eight, still four to one. It's got a pretty good game going here tonight. So the top of the order will face Conley. Conley's fatigue rating is a uh, eight, but he's only given up one, uh, one run, so he is good to go. So top of the order for the Giants. Looking to make some business here. So Whitey Lockman is 0 for 3 so far versus Conley. And that's going to be a wheelhouse. Ooh, he got a good pitch to hit, uh, but hits a deep fly ball to right field. Pafco back at the wall, feels for it, and catches it for the out. So how about that? Meatball given up by Conley there, but all Lockman can do is hit a long fly. Out number one. Braves caught a break there. Al Dark, he uh, had a meatball back in the sixth, but all he could do is ground it to O'Connell. That will be a tough 87. And that will be a ground ball to Logan. Easy bouncer. Two bouncer. Throws him out. So two away. Hank Thompson has walked in three at-bats. 
He will see if he can get a two-out rally going here for the New York faithful. That's a patient 66, and he's going to connect with a, a ball blooped into right field. That will find some turf, and he'll be on with a two-out single. He's a 3B. They got a 6, so he's not going anywhere. And Willie Mays, see if he can get something going here. The crowd is on their feet. For their hometown hero, Willie Mays is one for three today. And here's the pitch from Conley. Oh, that's a wheelhouse 95. Oh, how about that? Another deep, deep fly ball. Hank Aaron back at the wall, and he tracks it down. So the crowd uh, groans. Uh, Willie Mays just missed his pitch there. You don't get by with a uh, wheelhouse pitch with him. So no runs, one hit, runner left. You know, that's what makes this game great. I mean, you don't get that in, you know, in, in some of the other games. And, again, I'm not dissing them, but, I mean, you saw that he got his pitch to hit and just missed it. I mean, that gives you that pitcher-hitter interaction that you just can't get in some of the other games. So I, I love this game. I mean, the other ones are great. Uh, but this is my favorite. It's just a lot of fun. All right. Top of the ninth. Gene Conley got by with a couple pitches right down the middle. Hanging slider and a, a curve that didn't curve. So he's going to lead off. Uh, Charlie Grimm will let him go ahead and hit and see if he can finish this game. Uh, let's see. I need to get the scorebook. I got so excited I forgot where I was at. All right, so Conley will lead off the ninth. He's 0 for 3 today. And that's an 8. That's a patient 59. And versus a righty, that's going to be a ground ball to second base. Davy Williams throws it to Whitey Lockman. One out. Bill Bruton is 0 for 3. He didn't reach base once, but was promptly thrown out trying to steal second by Wes Westrom, who has two cut stealings today. That's going to be a patient 96. So he, uh, Bruton waits him out, but he ends up flying it out to right field. And that will be two away. So, so far, Marv Grissom's done a good job in relief, keeping the Braves at 4. Johnny Logan, he has doubled in four at bats. Still hitting 296 for the replay. And that's a patient 23, and he's going to draw a walk. So that's the 24th walk of the year that Logan has received. That's the first walk issued today by Marv Grissom. Um, Logan is a 3A, but he got a 6. So that brings up the dangerous Eddie Matthews. I'm sure Marv Grissom would have preferred to retired Logan to end the inning, but here is Ed, Eddie Matthews nonetheless. He uh, hit a, an RBI triple. He's been hit by a pitch, reached on an error, struck out, caught stealing. He's had an exciting day. So that's an end play 23. Oh, so that's going to be popped up on the infield. Davy Williams will wave everybody off, and that'll do it for the Braves here in the ninth. So, bottom of the ninth coming up. Milwaukee with a three run lead. All right. Five, six, and seven here due up for the Giants. Gene Conley pitching a great game, looking to see if he can get the complete game win. And here we go. Monty Irvin, he had a solo home run, his last at bat. And here's the pitch. That's an in play 34. So that's going to be popped up. And Eddie Matthews will call everybody off, and he will put it away in fair territory this time. So big, big first out there for Gene Conley. Davey Williams is singled. Made it to second. That's as far as he got back in the seventh. One for three today. That's a patient 30. And that's going to be trouble. 
That's going to be an opposite field shot, so it's over Adcock's head down into the right field corner. Uh, Pafco runs over to retrieve it, and Williams will coast into second with a double. So the Braves will get the bullpen up and going. Ernie Johnson, Dave Jolly out there. So Don Mueller, dangerous hitter, is up next. So here is Conley looking into the sign from Crandall, trying to get out of this. Oh, that's a wheelhouse 26. So thankfully Mueller don't have a lot of power, but he does get a single. So that's a uh, opposite field liner, the runner on second score. So he goes to left field. Aaron uh, will retrieve it. Davey Williams will score. And the Giants have cut the lead to 4-2. to two. So Conley is still not fatigued. That'll be Mueller's uh, 26th RBI of the year, and that brings up Wes Westrom. So... We will have the infield at double play depth. We're going to go with Conley here. And that's a in play 70. And that will be a fly ball out to Bruton in center field. And he takes a few steps to right center and catches it for out number two. So the Giants down to their last out. They're obviously going to go to the bench here. Their best pinch hitter has been disposed of already. So here we go. Let's see who they got. Hmm. Looks like they're going to go with... Let's see. Let's see what we got. Uh, they don't have a lot of options. They don't... All the uh, Well, yeah, they don't have a lot of other options. Looks like Bobby Hoffman uh, has a pretty good on-base percentage, so we'll go with him. The other lefties, they're not much to write home about, so Bobby Hoffman it is. Seeing if he can save the day here. He does have eight home runs. So we got the righty Hoffman. And Charlie Grimm's going to hang with Conley here. This is 1954, after all. So... Two out, Don Mueller on uh, first base, hopping at the plate. The New York faithful are on their feet, and here's the pitch. That's a tough 0-9, and he goes down swinging. So how about that? Great job by Conley. So they get uh, one run on two base hits, no errors, a runner left, and so the Milwaukee Braves are continuing their hot ways as they have won yet another game here in New York. We are 38 and 28. The Giants fall to 34 and 35. Gene Conley improves to 8 and 3. Antonelli drops to 7 and 11. They give the MVP to Conley, uh, which is understandable. He had a great game. Of course, uh, O'Connell had that big three run double back in the sixth, so he's the offensive star of the game. Let's go ahead and play the other games real quick. Again, I'm not playing anybody in the American League, but you can't split the, them up that I know of in replay. So uh, Baltimore, again, I would have done them. This is their first year in Baltimore after transplanting from St. Louis as the Browns, so that would have been a lot of fun. I wish I had thought of that before, when I started. But anyway, here's Chicago Cubs. They are in first place. They've got 8-2 and two, uh, Bob Rush versus Kurt Simmons, who's 5-8. and eight. Hey, and Simmons pulls it out. So the Cubs have dropped under us, so we should be in first place. So Kurt Simmons goes to 6-8. and eight. Uh, Davis takes the loss. Cincinnati is at Brooklyn, and they win 5-3. to three. How about that? Gus Bell with home run number 11. Gil Hodges had his 23rd. Erskine takes the loss. Corky Valentine with the win. New York at Detroit. Uh, Detroit wins 7-4. to four. Philadelphia at Cleveland. Cleveland wins three to two. Mike Garcia goes to nine and six. Uh, St. Louis at Pittsburgh, and they win easily seven to nothing. Harvey Haddix improves to ten and three. Bob Fran drops to three and eleven. 
uh, Chicago, the White Sox are 47 and 19. So they win again. <laughs> Virgil Trucks goes to 13 and one. How about that? So he, they are just mowing down the American League competition. So uh, the Milwaukee Braves are in first place. It's the first time we've been in first place in a while. So we're a half game on top of the Cubs. Uh, Brooklyn's two and a half out, and then we've got everybody bunched up here in the middle in Pittsburgh, uh, 23 and 48, uh, are bringing up the rear. So um, we've got another game. Let's see. We've got another game in New York uh, tomorrow, and then we got four games in Philadelphia. Uh, Robin Roberts and then Kurt Simmons. We've got both of those guys coming up. Roberts is 12 and 8 already. So uh, I might do that game. But uh, anyway. I enjoyed that very much. That was a good game. Uh, I like winning 18 to two, but these four to twos are a bit more exciting to, <laughs> to watch. So I appreciate it very much. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't do the screen over. So there you go. <laughs> There's the standings. Uh, so, uh, again, hope you enjoyed that. I did, and I'll see you next time.